Okay, let's consider the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy in our goods market model and ISL model. What we want to look at is what is the similarities and what are, are the differences if you compare an expansionary fiscal policy in these two models. Now, we're going to assume there's an increase in government spending. As you know, an expansionary fiscal policy can either be an increase in government spending and or a decrease in taxation. We're going to do the case for a change in government spending. Now, let's begin. There's an increase in government spending. Now, we know if you increase government spending, the government buys more goods and services. Producers produce more. There's a higher demand for goods and services. It falls over to an increase in the level of output. And there's a multiplier effect in operation here. If you're, in terms of your goods market model, that will be a shift of the demand for goods curve upwards. And that shift is equal to the change in government spending. And you then get corresponding change in the level of income, which is a multiple of the change in government spending. So this is what happens in your goods market diagram. Going to the ISLA model, you must remember, as in this goods market model, the demand for goods determines the level of output. So we start off with this level of output and interest rates. And now we increase government spending. Once again, that leads to increase in the demand for goods and the increase in the level of output. In terms of our model, our IS curve shifts to the right. It is that right with shifting the IS curve. Now, what then happens is because we have a financial market in this model, this increase in output increases the, the demand for money and the interest rate will increase. And then what happens is with this interest increase in the interest rate, here yeah, you can see the increase in the interest rate. We know that the increase in interest rate will decrease investment spending. There's a negative relationship. But we also know that as output increases, then there's an increase in investment. What we're not sure about is what is the net effect of these two things, because it's two opposing forces here. So we're a bit unsure whether it will increase or decrease. It depends on your, the value of your sensitivities here. So what we also see that with this increase in government spending, there's then this increase in output. So in both cases, there's an increase in output. It might not be exactly the same increase because of this interest rate income effect. And if you look in terms of the demand for goods, which says the demand for goods consists of C plus I plus G. Considering the case for the goods market, we know the government spending is higher. We assume that. That leads to increase in consumption because of the increase in income. That's the multiplier effect. But we know investment is unchanged because it's an autonomous variable in this model. In terms of your ISLA model, you'll say that consumption spending is definitely higher because income is higher. Plus, there's a change in investment, but we're not sure what that change is. And we will say there's also a change in government spending. So you, the difference between the two is there's more variables that you have to take into account when dealing with the ISLA model because it includes the financial market.